Party dance time. And action. Hit the button, baby. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. One doomsday rumor has a planet, a rogue planet named Nibiru or Planet X coming into the solar system and crashing into Earth. This is silly. If there were such an object, anybody could see it. It would be one of the brightest things in the sky. And all of a sudden, NASA started talking about Planet X. I was like, wait, what, 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 wait, what? Hi, I'm Jim Green, Director of Planetary Science at NASA. I couldn't be more pleased about what's happening. If Planet X is out there, we'll find it together. Ladies and gentlemen, in this Thor News episode, we have a little bit of everything in this action adventure astronomical romance. We have corruption, NASA, stars, artifacts, rogue planets, asteroids, bright lights, star hunting, planet finding, Simbad, treasure, and a whole lot of fuzzy pixels. Plus, some green screens. So come along as NASA needs our help with Planet X. Yeah, that's right. They're like, hey dudes, are you guys busy? We got time. We have our pros hunting for it. So, you guys can pick up a slack. I'm like, okay, great. I'm a slack picker-upper. I don't know if you know this. Thor News is for winners. And that's why you're here. To stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this Planet X story is crazier than I am. NASA wants you. You mean like to kill me or to smash me? Which in modern terms on YouTube means have sex with. Oh, NASA wants you to find a missing planet. Which planet do we lose now? I'm guessing it's Eris or Sedna since they haven't taken a picture of them in 10 years or talked about them. They don't want people to know. I guess I should read the article. Well, maybe I already know. I'm just trying to be over dramatic. I do that every once in a while. I'm a drama king. Want to work for NASA? Uh, maybe. Asterisk. From the comforts of your couch? I don't, I don't have a couch, so I guess I'm disqualified. The space agency is looking to fulfill an amateur astronomer's dream. Dash? Credit for the discovery of a new planet. Asterisk. NASA is looking for help to find the mysterious and as yet undiscovered Planet 9. Asterisk. Which astronomers think may be the most distant planet in our solar system. And then I want to say my own personal theory is that they've already found it and that they're slowly releasing the script so that we'll be mildly prepared when they tell us. A new website, Backyard Worlds, Planet 9, lets people comb through the footage captured by the agency's WISE Field Infrared Survey Explorer, WISE, mission a few years ago. We nicknamed that Amy Manger's toy. That nickname is stupid, so we don't use it a lot. The footage shows objects gradually moving across the sky. There are too many images for us to search through by ourselves. NASA said, NASA can talk? Holy shit, that's really scary. Hi, I'm NASA. NASA, can you call me on the phone? Maybe we can sort through our differences and get back to human space exploration, maybe? Asterisk, I don't know, just an idea. In this case, people are better than computers at spotting and identifying objects, such as a planet in the footage. Human eyes can easily recognize the important moving objects while ignoring background stars and other objects that computer programs would flag. And this is weird, because I was going through it last night, playing with it. Surprise, surprise, surprise. And it said, plans will be hard to find on this thing. In one of the comments by one of the wise professionals. I was like, well, doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of the whole thing then? This has potential to unlock a once in a century discoveries. And it's exciting to think that they could be spotted first by a citizen scientist. All right. So, I don't know. I guess I'm going to try and find Planet 9. That's pretty cool, right? The planet X. Now, Mike Brown and Constantine Bettigan, who don't work for NASA officially, have nicknamed it Planet 9. But Jim Green, a planetary head at NASA, has named it Planet X. So I'm very confused. There are just over four light years between Neptune and Proxima Centauri, the nearest star. And much of this vast territory is unexplored, said lead researcher Mark Kutcher. Yeah, that's a dude who leaves comments. An astrophysicist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Planet 9 could have a mass 10 times that of Earth and an orbit about 20 times farther than the Sun. On average, the Neptune, NASA said, it may take between 10,000 and 20,000 Earth years to find this planet. Wait, what? No, I read that wrong. It may take between 10,000 and 20,000 Earth years to make one full orbit around the sun. NASA suspects. Who would have thought NASA was a suspector? Pluto used to be the ninth planet before Mike Brown killed it, and it got demoted to dwarf planet status 10 years ago. NASA said that search for Planet 9 is a 21st century version of the technique astronomer Clyde Tombaugh used to find Pluto in 1930, a discovery made 87 years ago this week. Well, wonderful. That's up. Everybody suit up. Get your plant hunting 
gear on and let's go find us a treasure. Will you be the discoverer of Planet Nine? Maybe, but I doubt it. Mathematically, it just seems unreal. Citizen Science projects are a great way for anyone to be involved in the scientific process. Average everyday folks. Hey, lady, I ain't average. You got that? Average everyday folks have discovered things like supernovae, previously unseen craters on the moon, and Mars. Well, hey, you're telling me citizen scientists discovered Mars? Well, I guess that's true, since, you know, it was way back in the day. And even new planets orbiting a distant star. Now, you can be part of one of the most exciting quests yet. Find a mysterious, unseen planet in the far reaches of our own solar system. You see, last year, Caltech astronomers Mike Brown and Constantin Badigan found indirect evidence for the existence of a large planet, likely located out past Pluto. And since then, the search has been on. But so far, it's come up empty. And so astronomers decided they would bring in a little help to you. Well, how come they don't give any Hubble time to looking for this thing? You know, it's like, it doesn't seem that NASA's that interested. They're like, oh, go go ahead, look at old, old footage. How about some new footage, man? People who sign into the Backyard World Planet 9 website will basically be using the same type of technique that was used to find the last planet discovered in our solar system, Pluto. Yeah, because in 1930 they had internets and stuff. The aliens just didn't tell us about it. You see, Clyde Tombaugh used a special machine that systematically switched images on glass astronomical plates back and forth, looking for any objects in the night sky that moved between the images. Wise's infrared images cover the sky about six times over. This has allowed astronomers to search for the images of faint, glowing objects that change position over time. The Wise images have already turned up hundreds of previously unknown brown dwarfs. What? Oh yeah, they're just all really, really far away. Science has a rule. We cannot have any brown dwarfs within five light years of Earth, or they too will be demoted. And you don't want to be demoted from a human being to, I don't even know what they would demote us to, consumer or consumed. All right, so stay tuned for the second part of this exciting, exciting astronomical quest. We are going to join NASA's invitation in this red and blue pill series. There's just no real reason for me to get super cynical right now. See, if Planet 9, also known as Planet X, well, that's creepy, exists, and it is bright as some predictions, it could show up in wise data. Brown dwarfs form like stars, but evolve like planets. And the coldest ones are much like Jupiter. Speak for yourself, Jupiter's hot, baby. By using Backyard Worlds Planet 9, the public can help us discover more of these strange rogue worlds. Okay, so if I find the planet, are you guys going to name it after me? And can I get a free trip to the moon and you guys? Swamp Works, Glass Menagerie, Lunar Castle, or whatever, maybe? All right, so join me for the exciting next episode where we head over to the Backyard Worlds Planet 9. We will get started. Bum, bum, bum. You got dipoles, objects of interest. You got movers. Usually movers are expensive. This sounds free. You get to hit the button. See that? Boom. And then you can find artifacts and ghosts. Ghosts. NASA admits ghosts are real. Asterisk. All right. It's kind of fun. We'll see. Happy hunting. Let's go. Oh, I get a boring one, and then you just get to, like, hit play. All right, I'll be back soon. Be cool. Stay cool. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. And God bless everyone. Till we meet again. Hasta la vista. Keep your eyes in the skies. Heads up. No fear. A monkey dipped his vanilla wafer into my rice pudding. Wait, what? That's nobody's ending catchphrase, is it? No. No, it's not. If Planet X is out there, we'll find it together. Oh, this actually might even be true. Or we'll determine an alternate explanation for the data that we've received so far. This is the most fantastic story I've ever heard. Stay cool.